Nothing says welcome to Bradford like the public square. And whether you call it Veteran Square, Public Square, or just the square, as most people do, it's always been a part of Bradford. It's believed that it was donated to the city by Daniel Kingsbury and reflects the New England origins of many of our early settlers, including Kingsbury. It's one of the oldest pieces of real estate in Bradford. It's never had a house or a building or any structure of any kind on it, except, of course, for an occasional gazebo or bandstand. And we're going to look at that history in this edition of Coffee with the Curator. Now, this is one of the oldest photographs known that shows the square. And the photographer is standing where today's Emory Towers is. That hill in the back is Mount Robb, which of course can never change. So let's look at this photo. This photo was taken yesterday afternoon in September of 2021. And you can tell there's been quite a few changes over the years. And if you look carefully over that brick building on the right, you can see the top of Mount Robb. You can't move the hills of Bradford. They are there forever. But back to this photograph of the boys playing baseball or sock ball, as they called it, around 1860. For years at the landmark, we wondered exactly when this photograph was taken. But an article in 1890 finally answered the question. The man who wrote the article, John Johnston, said that the game was a game of sock ball played between rival teams from Limestone and West Branch. The article reads, the view was taken from the site now occupied by the St. James Hotel. And of course, today it's the Emory Towers. Across the way, a glimpse is shown of the old Bradford house. Small wooden buildings appear along the shaded street below Pine Street. This scene would never be recognized by anyone who was not in Bradford prior to the oil developments that built up and transformed the village into a lively little city. Yeah, no kidding. Complaints about the appearance of the square worked. And in June 3rd of 1880, a resolution was passed by the Select Council. The public square or veteran square looks pretty good today, but it wasn't always that way. As the years went on and the city grew and buildings popped up around the square, the square was sort of forgotten. By the summer of 1879, articles began to appear in the Bradford era, calling for improvements to that part of Bradford. It was called the dreariest part of Bradford, and it had nothing but some old weeds and branches and random lumber and a hay scale. Now don't ask me what a hay scale is because I don't know, but they didn't want one in the square. Complaints about the appearance of the square worked, and in June 3rd of 1880, a resolution was passed by the Select Council for the improvement of the lot of land at the intersection of Main and Mechanic Streets, known as the Public Square. And an article in June 25th of 1880 read, the work of filling in and grading the square was begun yesterday and is progressing at a satisfactory rate for such a tedious undertaking. A suitable and roomy driveway is left entirely around the square and the interior will be neatly terraced and sodded. A pretty fountain will doubtless be placed in the center and graveled walks laid out. And in July of 1886, it was raised up again two feet with dirt from a Main Street paving project. This photograph, taken in 1898, shows just exactly what that transformation achieved. This postcard, taken about 1910 or 1915, shows the public square in all its glory. Those trees were a gift of William Wallace Brown, a United States Senator from Bradford, who paid to have the trees planted. Now this photograph is taken from the present day Marilyn Horn and Seneca Building parking lot. 
But in 1895, the city council actually considered naming it Cranberry Place. It didn't pass. Now you can't talk about the square unless you mention the bandstand. And we've had several over the lifetime of the public square, starting with the first one in 1886. That's the bandstand you can see in the picture of the two women walking down the street in 1898. and the same one that can also be seen in this photograph from about 1900. But by 1923 or so, the old bandstand had seen better days and the town voted to replace it. In July of 1923, the Bradford era said, an old bandstand at the public square will be replaced by a massive and ornate structure with restrooms for men, and women in the basement, an ample band platform above. These restrooms would be a source of contention in the years to come. Just nine years later, in 1932, a petition was circulated to completely renovate the public square. That the old bandstand at public square is unsightly and next to useless in its present location it said the stand is very seldom used, citing the last important events that took there were Governor Pinchot's speech. They believe that a structure such as a bandstand would be of more benefit if it was located in Hanley Park. It read, the limited space at Public Square does not permit large turnouts of citizens, and the spot is usually always congested. The structure now, it was pointed out, is used primarily as a restroom and a convenient place where liquor can be disposed of. And certain undesirables make this place a hangout. Now, of course, this is still in prohibition. So there was a fear that people were drinking liquor down in the restrooms. And they probably were. But a couple of things saved the bandstand and the square. First of all, prohibition ended and second of all, there was such a public outcry that it was decided to save the square. And we shouldn't forget the cannons in the square either. Technically speaking, one was a cannon and one was a howitzer. The cannon was from the Spanish-American War and the howitzer was probably from the Civil War because it was owned by the Grand Army of the Republic, the GAR organization here in Bradford and for a time was actually up at Oak Hill at the base of the Civil War soldier. The cannon that you see in this photograph was loaned to the city by the federal government after the Spanish-American War. And surprisingly, it was loaded when it got here. Now, Ole in New York, who was actually quite jealous of Bradford in the 1900s, had this to say about the arrival of the cannon. Bradford has an old Spanish cannon that was captured during the late war and shipped to that place to be mounted in the public square. While waiting for a carriage at which to mount that piece, it was discovered that it contained a deadly Spanish shell, all capped and ready for business. The discovery of this dastardly attempt on the part of Spain to blow Bradford off the map of McKean County shocked the community. Women screamed and strong men turned tail when they read the account of the treachery of the Spanish government. Uh-huh. Oh, Olean, get over yourself. And in case you're wondering, the Pennsylvania National Guard at Bradford did fire the cannon to get that cannonball out into Hawkins Hollow. And then they took the ball down to Colonel Burns plumbing shop on the square and put it on display. Burns had been the commander of the Spanish American War. In 1898. The other cannon in the square, although it wasn't really a cannon at all but a howitzer, had been up in Oak Hill Cemetery near the statue of the Civil War soldier, and you can see in this picture the howitzer is at the base. It was donated to the city by the veterans of the Civil War, the GAR, on May 17th of 1898. The newspaper said it's been successfully put in the square. It's quite dangerous looking, but it is not loaded. 
His postcard shows where the howitzer was located, and it's sort of aimed at present-day Emory Towers. Also notice the horse drinking at the far right. That's a water fountain for horses. Here's a better shot of that water fountain. Whatever happened to those cannons anyway? Well, World War II happened. And there was actually another cannon, a German field artillery gun, that had been given to the city in 1925. We have no photograph of that cannon, but I believe it was actually in Hanley Park. All three cannons were given to the scrap drive in World War II. And speaking of World War II, this is the Bradford Honor Roll that was dedicated on May 16th of 1943 in the square. It held the names of 2,525 soldiers and sailors, men and women from the area who were in military service fighting the war. Following the removal of the Honor Roll, it was decided that the square should be renamed Veterans Square as more permanent memorial to all those who had served in any war in any conflict. It was officially dedicated on November 11th, 1954, the exact same day that President Eisenhower declared that Armistice Day would be called Veteran Day from that day forward. And let's talk about the lights of the square, those four stone pillars with the globe lights on top. They were erected in 1911, and originally there were supposed to be six of them, two on each end and two in the middle. But as far as we know, the two in the middle were never made. And now let's briefly talk about some of the veteran memorials that can be found in the square today, starting with the Spanish-American War Monument. The Spanish-American War was fought in the summer of 1898. It was fought between Spain and the United States. Hostilities began when an American ship, the USS Maine, was exploded in Havana Harbor in Cuba. The slogan, Remember the Maine, to hell with Spain, was a popular saying during the Spanish-American War. And this monument actually contains a piece of that ship, the Maine. The monument reads, this tablet is cast from metal recovered from the USS Maine in honor of the soldiers and sailors who fell in the Spanish-American War in 1898. It was erected by the Bradford Camp No. 54 of the USWV and Citizens in 1914 and contains a piece of the U.S. Maine destroyed in Havana Harbor, February 15th of 1898. Local men from the Pennsylvania National Guard fought in the Spanish-American War, and although no one was killed in battle, four men did die. And of course, the Spanish cannon was later given to the city as well. This monument can be found very near the bandstand on the side next to the Seneca building. This was the first monument of its kind to be erected in the square. It was dedicated on May 13th of 1919 to the World War I soldiers. It was said, a reminder to all those who pass through Main Street that Bradford is a patriotic city that stands behind its country and her soldiers. The names of all the soldiers that had fought in World War I from Bradford were listed on this monument. Eighty years later, in 1999, retired Navy Commander Vince Goodrich from Bradford decided that it should be refurbished. And after a two-year effort, the monument now contains the names of all World War I and World War II soldiers who fought from the Bradford area. A large monument right in the middle of the square honors the veterans of the Korean War and the Vietnam War. The Korean War monument lists the names of all those killed in action from Bradford, Duke Center, Kane, and Eldred. On the other side of this monument is the Vietnam Memorial, 
and it lists all those killed in action from Bradford, Hazlehurst, Kane, Eldred, Ormsby, Port Allegheny, and Smithport. These monuments were dedicated in November of 1983. And finally, a memorial to Master Sergeant Thomas Mahalik, who was killed in Afghanistan in June of 2006. This memorial was dedicated in 2008. And finally, this rock in the square. It was placed there in 1909 during the Old Home Week celebration that August and says from my plantation in McKean County, Mount Equity, containing 300 acres, Thomas McKean. Now Thomas McKean is who our county is named after and his plantation, Mount Equity, was near Turtle Point. Although it is unlikely that he ever actually lived there or even visited there. McKean, of course, was a signer of the Declaration of Independence and was governor of Pennsylvania three times. He died in 1817. So the next time you're downtown, take a moment and walk through the public square or Veterans Square. It's incredibly historic. Thank you.